Hey guys, and today I'm back with another ranking video. Uh, it's been a while since I've done these. Uh, I'm going to try and do them a lot more, but today we're going to be talking about Hatchet franchise. It's four movies. Uh, Hatchet 1, Hatchet 2, Hatchet 3, and Hatchet 4, which is not called Hatchet 4, it's called Victor Crowley, which is the killer's name. Uh, I think this franchise is a very good franchise. Uh, I love it much more than other people, because they are literally low-budget, cheap slasher flicks for... Low budget, cheap slasher fi flick fans. That's exactly what they are. They tried to bring back the old 80s horror to like 2000s and 2010s or whatever. And like, like not many other people, like there wasn't any more movies made about, like they didn't kind of succeed. Like Scream made this whole thing about, uh, about like meta or meta or whatever you call it films and Hatchet they tried to bring back the old 80s style but it didn't really work but I wish it did I hope I want horror movies to be back like that but um this franchise is really good because I think Victor Crowley the backstory is amazing of the um of him and why he is what he is uh the deaths are spectacular like a bit some are a bit too cartoonish some are a bit too bloody uh, but I I like it, and I don't have a problem with it really. Um, some characters are a bit rubbish. Um, part of one of the films, which I'll part of two of the films, which I'll get into in a minute. I was quite bored through. But the thing is, they what they do in this. This is really good because they try their best to get like because back in the eighties there was some big big horror slasher movie stars and they get some big actors big pop cultural horror movie uh people in in these four movies they get um danielle harris which is my personal favorite movie actress female mo movie actress of all time um they get kane hodders victor crowley tony todd is one of the main characters dion richman robert england as a cameo as freddy krueger uh they get so many people um, I'm trying to think of some more now. They actually, literally, they have, like, amazing casts in all of them. They get Parry Shen, who can forget about him? In four movies, he plays three different characters. In one and two, he plays two different people, and then in three and four, he plays the same guy. It's mad, and he, he, he's very talented. They get, uh, Tom Holland, they got, uh, John Carl Butch, Butcher, Butcher, I think that's how you say, he directed Friday the 15th Part 7. Uh, you get, uh, there's so many people, uh, Ed Ackerman, there are so many actors, and I think Victor Crowley, the main villain, I think the setting is good, the characters are quite good, Tony Todd is amazing in this, so is Daniel Harris, uh, they get Derek Mears in part three, which they have, where Kane Hodd is the killer, and they have Derek Mears, so it's, it's Jason versus Jason, you know what I'm saying, and... They're Freddy vs. Jason in this, because Robert England's Candyman vs. Jason. This, this is going all out. But they, um, I think it's very good how, I think Victor Crowley is very underrated. I think he deserves to be up there with the big horror icons. Not the three big main ones. Like, so I think the three main big ones, Freddy, Jason, and Michael, they're the three main ones. And then the lower ones, I wouldn't say the secondary, they're just like... Not better than Freddy, Jason, and Michael. We have like Leatherface and Chucky and Pinhead. I think Victor Crowley, like, and some others. I think Victor Crowley deserves to be with them. But anyway, on with my ranking. So, in. The fourth place for me is going to be Hatchet 3 because um, I like this film. Um, they actually uh, they do good. The deaths are good. It's just um, I found that a lot of, of the film quite boring because um, uh, Danielle Harris, the main girl, she did uh, Mary Beth Dunstan. Mary Beth. She did. She didn't really have like much to do with this film. Much like she died at the end as well. Wait, spoiler alert, uh, I don't think she deserved to. I think she deserved to be in part four. And Parry Shen's character in this one, I forgot what he was called, because he has different names in all of them. You'll get what I mean. Uh, he's the only survivor, and he survives by letting everyone else die, being a pussy, hiding. Uh, a bunch of characters that die, a bunch of no-names, and 
as I said, Derek Mears is in this one. We have Jason versus Jason, which doesn't last very long because um, he kind of dies instantly. He kind of rips his whole spine and skull out of him. Um, the, some of the characters are good in this film. Some I There are actually some characters I did not want to die. Some I felt sorry for, like the sheriff, one of those cops, one of those deputies. I didn't want him to die. Um... I didn't want the uh, black deputy to die either. I really didn't want Mary, Be Mary Beth to die. Uh, and Victor Crowley, you think that's the end of him. Um, I don't see how he could come back from being shot in the face with a shotgun and falling on a huge chainsaw which shots into pieces. But he came back with no explanation because he just returns to his original form the next day. But anyway, that's Hatchet 3. So... In fourth place, no, third place for me is Hatchet 4. I wasn't sure between Hatchet 3 and 4, because Hatchet 4 is the newest one. It came out this, uh, not this year, last year, in 2017. I actually, I was quite bored for a lot of the film. Like, it was meant to be how, like, the how to destroy ha uh, Victor Crowley. Like, how, do, this, like, the film's called Victor Crowley, so it's about, it's not even called Hatchet. But Victor Crowley, it was meant, what was that? How to destroy him. Was how they destroyed him in part three at the end. Well, they think they know how to destroy him in all of them, but still. And like, he comes with like no explanation, just like the others, but the others is understandable. Um, this one, he has a good death scene. I don't really like any of the characters really in this one. Some I, I grew to like, but when I first came, I was like, who are these, like, Mongols, douchebags? Like, I didn't like them, but then I grew to like them. And when some of them died, I got, I, I wasn't very happy, like, some characters I just like died. Uh, I also don't like about the Hatchet films, how, like, they end just so suddenly, like, they don't get a good ending. Like, this one ends with Parry Shen's character, the Asian guy, going, FUCK! <laughs> Literally, after Victor Crowley gets, spoiler alert, pushed into a propeller of a plane. Like, the engine of a plane. And he just goes into pieces, and then he just goes, FUCK! And then the film ends. Um... You got if you know what Impractical Jokers is, there's a funny TV show and Q Brian Quinn Q, he is on this film, and um, like, I don't get why he's on the film. Uh, none of the characters apart from, uh, Parry Shen's character are uh, known, and obviously Victor Crowley. This film, I don't know. I just, I just, I was gonna put this one last, but I come to the end. I actually started to enjoy it a bit more than I enjoyed Hatchet Free. So, some people might not agree, but my. Second place is Hatchet, the original. Um, I really like almost every character. I think it's a perfect slasher movie. Dion Richmond is obviously going to be my favourite character. He's my favourite character in Scream 3. He's my favourite character in Hatchet. He's so funny. He's like the token minority black man. And we know it. Because he doesn't shut up. And he's just funny. He's the best character. Of, and he actually dies last. Like... I thought they were going along with cliches, so I thought he was going to die first. I wasn't very happy. I was like, oh, this dear Richmond, they shouldn't really waste him like that because I thought they was going to go along with the cliches. But then he got more screen time and died last, so that is good. Well, I say last. We fought Mary Beth and the other guy who I didn't really like. I didn't really like who was meant to be the main guy. I didn't really like him. He was like, but he died. And Mary Beth's actress in this, this is a different actress. that She got replaced with Daniel House in part two. Uh, she, I don't like this one in part one, but the origin of Victor Crowley, the death scenes in this one, fantastic, fantastic slasher horror movie with a bit of comedy, it's like a dark comedy uh, horror movie slasher, they have loads of cameos in this, Robert England, uh, Tony Todd has a cameo appearance in this one and he's a big character in number two, and he also has a cameo in number four, not three, um, there's so many big names in these movies. It's unbelievable. Uh, and John Carl Butcher, the uh, one, the Friday the 13th Part 7 director, has a cameo in this one. But anyway, Hatchet. That's Hatchet. And that is in second place for me. But my favourite is Hatchet 2. And the reason Hatchet 2 is my favourite, oh, they ch they do change from Hatchet uh, like to a old 80s slasher to an old comedy horror which they they tell way more jokes. There's a few bad acting. They they got Daniel Harris, Tony Todd, um, they got Tom Holland, and they obviously got 
they obviously got um what's I going <laughs> they obviously have um Victor Crowley which is Kane Hodder. Uh this film the death scenes are so f like so funny and creative and the ending of this I like um I wanted Tony Todd to survive even though he kind of goes a bit bad at the end which was a good thing I like Tony Todd um my favorite I have to say my favorite character in this was once again the black guy because for some reason in the in mo horror movies the black guys always turn out to be the best character they're always the most funniest the strong they're like just like the best character and oh this guy I call him the the biscuits chicken and gravy guy because this and gravy and biscuits and chicken and gravy and the chickens with the biscuits on the gravy with the biscuits and the chicken wants a biscuit for the biscuit is me he is such a funny character he is like he's like every death scene is good uh Every actor is good. Danielle Harris comes in to play Mary Beth, replacing the actress in number one, which I like. Like I like Danielle Harris much more than the other one. Victor Crowley's death is very good. Um, and this one is just a very good dark comedy horror. I think you could say that's a comedy horror. It did cha change the genre a bit more, but I don't care. I, I love this one. I, I wasn't sure whether to put... Hatchet one in first place until I rewatched part two and I love part two a lot more. So that's my ranking for the Hatchet quadrilogy or whatever you want to call it. Put your list down below if you've seen the movies. If you haven't, go watch them. I I recommend it. Um, and this has been LTGHD. Uh, later on this week, I'll be um, either this week or next week. I'll be ranking the Jeepers Creepers trilogy because it's only three, so it'll be a short one. But I'll see you guys in a bit.